How's it going, everybody? It's Jeff Chrysler here, a detail enthusiast and owner of Rightway Heritage Trimming, here with my next project, this beautiful 68 Series 2 E-Type. Um, and it's gonna, it's in for a complete full interior. It's a beautiful restoration my friend Richard Owen here has been doing. Uh, new everything, you know, not a stone unturned. Um, so yeah, it's gonna have a beautiful biscuit interior with maroon uh, carpets to go with this beautiful uh, opalescent uh, maroon color on here. So really looking forward to getting into this. You can see he's already got the dash all nicely installed and looking beautiful. Car runs, it's uh, ready to go. So interior is the final bit that we'll be doing over the next weeks to get it ready for the Van Dusen British Car Show. So. I do have my work cut out for me, so lots of work to do. Luckily, um, I've already finished the seats, which are right over here. Um, so they're nicely finished. The Series 2 in biscuit leather with the uh, correct embossing. They're all folded up right now, so they're a little wrinkled, but uh, we'll get them all straightened out once we put them back in the car. And uh, yeah, I've got kits that I've purchased from BAS International out of the UK. I, I usually go to those guys for uh, my Jaguar upholstery kits. Um, they make a good product. So here's the, the biscuit vinyl uh, inner sill kits and the wheel arch covers and the jute and the carpet. So I'll be putting, this is some of the first stuff to go in. The rest of the kits are all in the queue ready to go. So. I'll start with the jute, as we always do, and um, get into some of this stuff. Jute followed by some of these vinyl covers with foam, and then, uh, and then yeah, finally the carpet. Okay, look at that. We got the jute installed. It's the three-quarter inch jute on these E-types. So, yeah, one, two, three pieces along the walls and toe boards, and then the, and then the fourth piece being the main floor piece and it just the floor piece we don't glue in we just lay it in there and then the carpet will go over top of it but if it ever gets wet you want to be able to lift this out of here easily um, whereas these pieces are glued in place obviously and coming around to the other side you can see here same sort of deal um, except there's not a piece for here because the carpet piece here the driver's side on these e-types has uh well i can show you here it's um kind of a special piece here that goes in just on the driver's side. Here we go. It snaps in place and it has its own insulation section in it, you know, but it's a, it's a, it's like a hidden storage pocket that's there on the driver's side. So you can hide your wallet in there if you need to, and you can also unsnap it to lift up for access to uh, refilling the gearbox oil so that's why they've got this pocket with this insulation in the pocket so you can access the uh, the uh, rubber plug there um, so really simple and uh, yeah otherwise it's pretty much the same obviously there's some cutting out to do around the pedal here uh, I got to clean up the overspray I got there on the gas pedal um, but yeah so ready to proceed. So the next pieces to go in before I start doing any carpet is um, we got to get some vinyl installed. So these sill covers go in first and then everything else overlaps the edges of the sills. So sills first and then we'll, there's hard durs here that overlap the sills. There's uh, more hard dur or carpet here that overlaps the sill carpet or sill vinyl. Um, so yeah, next is the sills on both sides and then this rear bulkhead section is also covered in a, in a vinyl cover and as well as the wheel arches are also covered in vinyl covers and those go underneath of everything else that overlaps them. So we'll get those in and they all have their own uh, thin eighth inch foam just to level everything out. So we'll get that going. So working along here, you can see I've got one of the sill vinyls in place now and uh, on the other side, I've got the foam glued in place and with each one, of course, you've got this wiring harness going along on inner channel there with little straps that hold it down. So you got to, you know, tap that in there as tight as it will go and then lay the foam over top of it. And what you're seeing there, I've been sanding the foam to, to level it out. So I've sanded it along. There's like a welded edge that you got to try and level out there on either side. 
So I've sanded the edges and I've also sanded those whatever shows. I'm just using a block, uh, block of wood with sanding paper on it to level that out. So you do it, level it out as best you can. And now when I glue the vinyl in, I'm only going to glue the bottom corner. Uh, everything in here is going to be covered by a hardura and same thing with here. You got a panel coming straight down there. So I glue these areas that are going to be covered and just the bottom corner and then these corners all the way around get all glued. And, uh, and then you just kind of let it float over that area and you pull it tight, stretching it, uh, and it levels it out really nicely. So I'll show you the other side here. It comes out quite nice. So there's still a little bit of an impression and they all had it. I mean, you can't cover it entirely, but um, you can make it disappear most of the way along. And of course the seat comes up to the bottom edge of this as well too. So you'll never really see that little bit, but um, yeah. It's glued, like I say, all the, all around the edges and uh, pulled tight and over those areas to try and level them out. So yeah, you can see this is ready to go. Um, I just used masking tape for my glue because I'm using the spray glue, which I recommend for any upholstery <laughs> interior work. Um, so I've got my gun here. So I'll be spraying these areas and then pull the tape off before I stick the vinyl. And of course the vinyl here, I, I cut the foam back because there's a chrome finisher that presses on here with little clips. So you've got a, and it's only just big enough to go over the metal. There's no uh, room for the foam here. So I have to cut the foam back a little bit and the vinyl will just kind of float off the edge of the foam and it'll be nicely glued under this lip and just to the edge of it. Um, and so that will nicely fit over the vinyl there. So yeah, I'll spray glue this whole thing and, uh, and then pull all the tape out of there and put the vinyl in. Okay, and there is the passenger side sill. So came out really nice. Got both sills in, all the jute. Here's the driver's side sill. Very nice. So next pieces in the front here, I can start doing the Hardura here that's going to cover here and then some of the carpet pieces in here there'll be under dash and hardera end panels eventually although we're going to want to put the dash top on before those go in just so we can route these um the demister pipes here for defrosting the um windshield next piece i'm going to put in back here is going to be this lower rear bulkhead Okay, and there we are with the lower rear bulkhead vinyl glued in place. I just followed the straight seam line there and you gotta, it's tight. You gotta tuck it into these edges and glue it everywhere. And uh, yeah, so it goes in there. Again, it's, it's about pushing those wires into the corner and, and going over it and trying to force them to be as low as they possibly can. Um, along here, there's a wire in that bottom corner going up and over. And uh, again, I, there's like little fold down tabs that you fold them down to the floor, not up, but down to the floor. And, um, and then there'll be a, an under seat hardura that just sits in here and the seats hold it down. So that'll cover it all the, into the corners. So next piece is to go back here. I'll be doing the wheel arches. I'm gonna put the top up and out of my way for that. Um, and then once the wheel arches are in, then I can do this rear, lower rear uh, bulkhead uh, arm or sorry hardura that goes in there okay and I've got the wheel arch covers in and uh, you'll notice um, I had to pull out the little strip of vinyl that you had put in there it's it's actually supposed to be all one piece this whole wheel arch with that piece included so uh, we've got that in there of course there's quarter inch foam on the wheel arch itself to try and help level out where the wire is sneaking across the bottom so um, Put in the quarter inch foam first and uh, cut it off even with the wire and then uh, I always offer up the the piece of vinyl first just to see exactly how it best fits and then I make a couple chalk lines just onto the metal working on the vinyl so that when I glue it all up I can line it up with the chalk line chalk lines as I place it so got both sides in yeah it's a lot of working and finesse to try and get all the wrinkles out you never get them totally totally out but that's about as good as that's going to get of course the hardura that's going to be 
gluing in here will kind of ride up onto the those corners to help hide them. Um, but yeah, so wheel arches are in, and uh, yeah, now we can proceed with uh, putting in this rear hardura and of course the rear panels as well that'll be going in there. Okay, and continuing along, here we are with the rear hardura section installed. And as you can see, it nicely overlaps up onto the wheel arches to cover those edges where the wires go underneath and uh, nicely follows this profile along the bottom. And of course, there's gonna be rear panels covering it all around the back here. So, and of course I, I had to put these vinyl covers in. There'll be a panel covering over that, but there's a cutout in the panel for, that's where the uh, top frame attaches there. So that's all ready to go, ready to start installing panels and uh, top frame. So now I can move to the forward cockpit again, and I'm gonna start putting in these front harduras and carpet pieces. Okay, and I've just uh, reinstalled the top frame. I had Richard come over and give me a hand getting it into the car safely, so it's all nice and bolted down. And uh, yeah, I had to have it out of the way so we could put in, you know, the wheel arch covers there that cover that upper shelf. And then of course these vinyl covers down here. So now the uh, now that the top frame's in there, I can. Um, continue on I'll, I will be uh, we've got it nicely adjusted we had to shim this side just some shims underneath of where the frame mounts to the car there and uh, and now it's sitting beautifully across that windshield gotta work out that little dent there um, but other than that it's nice and even um, so yeah we've got it nicely adjusted so I will be now uh, unscrewing removing that header pan and trimming it separately and once it's all nicely trimmed in the uh, headliner material, then it goes back on and then we'll start doing the webbing straps and can go about doing the head or the, the top later on. Um, but next steps in the rear here, uh, now that the top is fit, I can, uh, I'll loosen off those little screws there just to, so that I can get the panel in behind it and then put the screws back in. And then of course there's panels that screw in all around the back here to finish this. So, but uh, like I say, first things I'm going to do next is continue on with the tow boards and get those harduras in and, and the carpet pieces in there. So moving right along here, you can see I've installed those uh, tow board harduras. And of course you have to take out the latch, bonnet latch assemblies and then pop them back in after the piece of hardura is in there. And uh, yeah, and you can see there's a little bit of overlap onto the tow board, as there should be. And then, um, yeah, on this side, you can see I've been putting in the tow board carpets. So you got the one on the side that you got to squeeze in behind the throttle pedal there. Uh, this one just stays loose, like I say, and it snaps to the floor there. So I've got to put in those snaps. And, uh, and then, of course, the center console is going to help hold that all in position because it tucks under it. And then the final piece is the tow board. Now, obviously there's still under dash uh, harduras and panels to go in, so that'll all finish that. And uh, yeah, now I'm just moving to the other side. And of course, here's this uh, under seat carpet that goes into, um, especially with these ones, with all this wool carpet, it has a non, it has a non porous backing and I always scuff it up with like a wire brush so that the glue has something to adhere to. So you can see I've scuffed these up and pre-sprayed pre them in the glue and they're just about ready to tack on now. Okay, hey, look at this, we've jumped forward. I've now finished installing the rest of the carpets on both sides. So, and uh, now I've just set, it's not uh, snapped in place yet, but I've set the front mats in just to see how they're gonna fit and they beautifully fit and overlap everything as they should. So there's a couple little plastic push-in snap things. Um, it's like a compression fit. Uh, they, these get them in the four corners, basically, as original. So we'll be installing those next. And then in the rear, I've got these under seat mats. They just set in place. They're not actually glued. But as you can see, they nicely overlap everything as they should. And I just, it's the seat belt mounting and then the two seat mountings that hold them down. And of course the seat will be on top of that, holding it down. I will have to locate and poke the holes through for the rear seat bolts as well. 
um, but those front ones have those little uh, catches that the seat slides into and then the rears are just screwed down. So this is all looking wonderful. Um, really like that uh, two-tone coloring with the maroon carpet and the biscuit, everything else. Um, really sets it off. Of course, it'll have a nicely trimmed biscuit center console going in there with the biscuit leather seats and panels. So uh, it's gonna really, really show well. Uh, but this maroon carpet nicely matches the color of the body. It's uh, really nice. So this is coming along beautiful. So uh, yeah, we're going to continue on with uh, doing the, the rear panels all in here. And then, of course, the door panels and console. So carrying along, you can see I have now trimmed the center console. Um, stripped it all down and all new vinyl and leather on the ski slope, leather on the top of here, everything else is vinyl. Um, can open up the storage box here, so that's all nicely done. These are all individually trimmed panels, the lower piece and this piece that uh, glues and tacks onto the bottom. And you got the uh, little catch there. And uh, yeah, this one has the ashtray and this this being a Series 2 E-Type, uh, the shift dome and, and boot are, are black on Series 2s because it goes along with the later Series 2 center console you can see there. It's all black, so they kind of unified the color there on the C Series 2. So, just about ready to put this in place. So, how I do that, I'm going to have to pull the handbrake up as far as it'll go and... Uh, I'll take the uh, shift knob off and carefully feed it all down, sort of in on an, on an angle, get the front end down, and then slowly drop it down. So it's a tricky process, so I'll show you when it's all done. Okay, look at that. We've got the console installed, and um, huh, quite an ordeal. I, I, I had to remove the radio console here in order to get this in there properly. And of course we loosened off the handbrake cable so that we could lift the handbrake all the way up and uh, maneuver it into position. And, uh, and then it's actually easier than it often is to get the radio console back in. It, it, I was able to just carefully separate both sides as I guided it in and got it in first go. So it fit very nicely, very snug. And uh, so we've got, these are the, the nuts and that's like a, a little threaded bolt that goes in the top so those are in um, yeah so that's all looking good all that's left is there's a piping that goes in there I usually always put that in after it's a lot easier to do after the fact so um, yeah we be putting that in next and that is just a reflection from this <laughs> I keep thinking it's a scratch and it's not um, so next in line here, oh, and I can show you, I've been carrying on in the rear here. I've finally just got all the rear panels in there. So each side has this big long one and then that short one and then this pair, actually there's four in there. So as it goes, this, uh, this is the aperture panel. So that goes in, you have to put a bend in, in here. So that screws in underneath of this corner one. And uh, yeah, you can see it, the corner one over there that overlaps the shut panel. And on the Series 2, so Series 1 has a much fatter thing coming down here. Well, it's, it stays full width when it comes down. Series 2, they cut it back like this for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I don't think it's, I think it's maybe a little more clearance for the seats because maybe the panels were getting scraped up. I'm not sure, but... Um, Series 2 look like that, anyway, and uh, yeah, and you got a pair of push-in clips in the top there, and then screws in the bottom corner and that corner, and, uh, and actually there's another push-in clip in here, so holds it all together, and uh, yeah, looks really good. So there is all of that. Got some glue to clean off in a couple spots, but uh, yeah, looking really nice. So. Of course, I had to take out these uh, top bolts to maneuver that panel in there and then put the top bolt in again afterwards. So that's all looking great. So yeah, carrying on, next 
steps are going to be I've got the dash top panel here and uh, we're going to be maneuvering that in position and hooking up all of the demister hoses to the respective demisters there and uh, yeah it all just sets in place and we'll have to flip down the, the center console panel so that we can access the uh, those two studs come down through there with nuts on the bottom of them and that's basically all that holds it oh and there's another pair in the corners um, but yeah so we'll get that in position. There we are, a thing of beauty. The dash top is now fully installed. And boy, it was a heck of a time getting it in there, but I got it in there and got all the demister pipes hooked up underneath and got the nuts and washers on to cinch it down. So now I'm just putting in some of the under dash Harduras. So there's two on the driver's side, uh, right and left piece, as you can see there. And then there will be uh, black grain boards, under dash panels that cover up this area. Um, so they, the boards screw in place, whereas the harder is glue in place. So I'll show you the other side here. Um, you can see passenger side is just one piece that's shaped and bound. And uh, yeah, it's just hanging down where the uh, console board is gonna hold up that end of it. And yeah, so, and you can see there's little brackets with uh, things on backwards, actually. Little um, uh, captive nut things for the screws to come up through from the bottom. So I gotta turn those around, they're upside down. Anyway, you get the idea. Okay, and there is the under dash panels installed. So a uh, little bit, of a gap here um i'm gonna try and tap that in with a piece of wood and a hammer because the board is quite rigid and i think i can just kind of bend it there to fold it up and it just needs to have a bend put into it so i'm gonna do that yet to try and cover that gap but other than that they went pretty well just a couple like it tucks under the dash al along the back edge and then along the front there's just a couple screws to hold it in and it folds up over the column and things like that other side is sort of the same. It's uh, just a couple screws holding it along the front edge and it tucks up under the dash there. So that's how it finishes. So now we can carry on. Um, I've still got to do the dash, the uh, piping there on the shift dome, but I'm going to install the windshield posts, which are also in matching black. Um, and then when I install those, I do these corner pieces with the dash handle and that, so we can get all that in and then carry on with the doors. So coming right along here. Now, one more thing, I don't know, I think I forgot to cover it, so I'll just go over it now. I've installed, before I put in these rear panels here, I first installed the rear tack strip along the outside. And I've used, it's, it's, it comes in a roll and it's a black uh, plastic, flexible black plastic material and you can buy it in different, and it's a flexible uh, tack strip. And so I cut it to length and got it just the right size so it fills the channel here and uh, put it in there with a, with a bunch of like big uh, tacks and a couple tiny little screws from the backside. And, um, and then once it was in there, I cover over the top, you know, with about a two uh, inch and a half strip of vinyl to cover the top edge. And then, uh, so now it's ready for the top to go on and then the panels cover this side of it all. So yeah, nicely finishes there. So just preparing to install the door panels. So the first pieces I put on, uh, you've got a uh, usually retrim the original of this panel um, in new vinyl and yeah so that's a separate panel it just screws in place with that little door light switch plate um, that holds it in and then it's glued to the door just with that flap that hangs over the edge and then I've already retrimmed these upper door cappings with new foam and everything and it's got the new uh, brush seal with those special clips that hold it along the top edge so it just hooks on there and there. Um, there's little hooks inside that it drops down into. So you put the first, the forward, put it in from the back like this so it can go underneath of this chrome here and, uh, and be on resting on that hook. And then the lower end drops down. 
and then I'm just using the original holes, poking them through, finding them through the vinyl, and this will be held on by this chrome with screws going through, four screws going along there, as you can see. Again, original chromes, um, so we're using the original holes for everything. And then there's another one like this that goes along the front edge. And these always overhang quite a bit. Uh, the whole panel and chrome overhang at the front, which is why you've got to trim the front back edge of the panel. I'll show you here. That's why that goes so deeply there, is because if you look down in, you can still see that front edge. So, once I get those chromes on, I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so just uh, pre-assembling these door panels, getting them ready to do put the go to the car, <laughs> put them on the car. Um, as you can see, I've put these chrome strips on. You got to put this one on first, and then the outside two go on. And the way they attach, this thing goes on, and it uses these special rivets here. Let me just show you that look like that. So the chrome can slide onto that boss when it's in place and uh, and be held down. Um, I will say with all of these door panels, I've never seen a C Series 2 from any manufacturer that I didn't have to modify this opening slightly for it all to line up and fit. So yeah, I had to peel back the vinyl just on this edge here and reduce the height of the board here by oh, almost eighth of an inch, almost. And then, uh, and then just reattach the vinyl. And then the chrome was lined up to these holes. Uh, and then you just slot this one down in place and it lines up to the holes. So yeah, there's one of those rivets here and back here and again right here. Um, and so yeah, the chrome just snaps down onto the rivets. There's one there, like I say, there and there. And then it uses these, uh, these little guys that slide into the chrome and, uh, and there's little double sets of holes. And you just poke them through and peen them over on the backside. So now that's about ready to go. So now I've got to put, reinstall the, the black um, backing, which goes over this like this. And you have to make sure it lines up nicely. And uh, yeah, so I'll staple that in place from the backside. And uh, so then I'll go offer it up to the car um, just kind of set it where it's going to need to be you can you'll be able to see that starting to poke through um, and then where the door handle is here i'm going to have to cut a hole for it in the in the black plastic just big enough for the door handle the center boss to poke through okay and there we are the door panel is now pushed into place it's got those green panel clips that pop in you got to line them up with each hole but there's a row of them going all along the bottom and of course you gotta shove it up into this chrome which is a really tight fit especially where it goes around the corner here the panel actually bends like this here um, so it's tricky to get it going into that channel but once you get it and you push it up as high as it'll go and then line up the panel clips and just push it in all along and here you can see where i marked and drilled that hole for the uh door latch. The way I do that is I just kind of hold the panel in position so that it's exactly where it needs to be and I, I chalk the end of this screw here and uh, and just kind of wiggle the panel around holding it in the right position and it makes a mark on the back of the plastic and then I can drill it through starting with a small hole and opening it up. And uh, this same sort of thing, I just, there's a hole already on the backside in the right spot, so I just cut an X in the material, and sure enough, the wind, window winder pokes out. So now I'm just gonna use my knife to cut around. There's like a little, uh, you can see on the handle, there's like a hex shape that uh, I'm gonna cut around that, and it just presses onto that to engage it. And of course, you got a little chrome ring that goes under it. So yeah, I can put these handles on, and then the last thing to do and I made sure to mark these from the back before I put the panel on. There's, there's holes in the panel for these, but that's for the armrest. So I'll be poking those through with a probe and trying to figure out where the, the threads are up on an angle like this. So we've got to find them and then line it up with the armrest and screw it in place. 
Okay, and there is the finished door panels. So I got the handles on and the, uh, the larger plastic handle. I was able to locate those screws and get it on. So that's looking really good. Um, as you can see, I've now installed the sill chrome and I'm just gonna put in the rubber next, um, reinstall that. And I've got the seats bolted in. Um, so that's looking really good. Interior's really coming, getting close here. So um, just some odds and ends I've still got to do. I've still got to do these windshield posts. That's what I'm going to get into next. You can see the other door panel over there looking great. And I've got to do the piping over the uh, shift dome there. Um, I've now put in the carpet snaps. It's hard to tell, but they're those little press-in plastic plugs that press into the uh, corresponding ones that are in the floor. So that's all done. And oops, I've got a washer here. And um, yeah, that's all looking really good. So um, yeah, carrying on. And of course with putting the seat belt seats, I put in the seat belts back in, got those nicely bolted in place. So it's looking really good. And I've now removed the top header pan. Um, it's just these two uh, bolts, nuts and bolts here. I just lost the other washer. That's where that came from, just off the end of there. Huh. Um, so yeah, I've just left those bolts in there temporarily when I go to reinstall. I'll, I'll put them back in. Um, so yeah, this is all looking really good. Like I say, interior is nearing completion and uh, we'll get into the windshield posts and finishing of the top next. Okay, so I've just retrimmed the front header pan. Um, this is in new uh, correct mohair for doing these. So uh, again, that was supplied with the kits from BAS. So, and these are the hold down straps. So when the top is in its stowed position, these unsnap from here, go down through there and, and snap down to the rear bulkhead in, in behind and hold it all down. Um, so yeah, I've got it all reassembled with the latches. Um, so it's ready to offer up to the car again. I got new chrome rings in here. The tabs bent over on the back side. So yeah, can offer this up to the car and get it uh, bolted back in and uh, get into installing the new top. Okay, moving on to the boot. <laughs> I didn't show any before shots, but it's really simple. It's just the four pieces. So you've got, first piece to go in is this rear section. Of course, before I put that in, there's two snaps that you can see the holes in the, in the top corners there um, that, that are on the inside of the cockpit here. So you can see them right there. They're a little lift the dot snap that uh, when the boot cover uh, or when the top is folded down, I should say, that's where those little securing straps up there snap onto to hold the top down. Um, yeah, so those go in first. And like I say, they're visible in those top corners. And then once they're in there, then I can put in this rear Hardura piece and it just glues in there. And then these side pieces just slot in place. It's all very easy to pull it out of here. Um, so the side pieces, yeah, I, I kind of scoop them up and then kick in the corners along the side and they kind of drop down uh, behind the wood panels that are underneath of this big Hardura. There's, there's the pair of wood panels that come over to the side, but they're not tight against it because they have a space for this panel, for these panels to sit. So yeah, you get them slid in place. You can, it's easier to just lift the wood panels out and put them in place and then put the wood panels in and it kind of locks it all together. So, and then all that's left is this rear main mat that has the four snaps in the corners, as you can see, and that completes the boot trimming. And just like that, we have a top. Uh, sorry guys, I didn't go through the whole top installation. I got into the process and forgot to film anything, but um, here we are. The top is now installed. So what I had showed you is doing the uh, header pan. You can see it in there. And uh, basically once that was on, um, lay the top in place. Of course, I had already done the rear tack strip here. So I always start with uh, gluing this rear bow. It has, uh, you can see there, it's got uh, uh, flaps that glue around the bow on the inside. So I mark the center line and start gluing it and pulling it out to the edges as I'm going. 
um, to get good tension. And then once that bow is in place, oh, and of course I've done the webbing straps first too. They have a set location, uh, copying the olds, the old ones exactly. Um, and so that sets that rear bow. And um, yeah, anyway, so once that is glued in place, then I pull it all out here. I start in the center, marking center lines and get the rear window pulled down tight and make sure that bow is lining up to where it needs to and just kind of work my way out either side, stapling along that tack strip. And uh, yeah, and then at the front here, of course, I, I just glue the front edge and pull this forward starting in the center again and get that glued around the lip and then the chrome finisher goes on there. It's got a couple of those same clips that are used in the sill chromes. And yeah, get it all done. Of course, the windows, uh, it gets wrapped around the edge there and glued and then there's a chrome finisher that uh, rivets over top of it. And then finally is the uh, seals and I've just put them in there and I've got the windows up and they, they make a nice seal all the way around, which is great. So that's got the top all done. So, and uh, yeah, and of course it finishes with this rear chrome finisher. I had to locate where these hooks go. Those hooks are for uh, installing the boot cover for when the top is folded down. And of course this chrome finisher has a, a bead of piping along the bottom of it that uh, finishes along the edge there and uh, fills in the gap. So, now I will add, whether you're a novice or a seasoned professional, accidents happen. I've been doing this work for a long time, and luckily my accidents rarely happen anymore as you tend to learn from each one. Unfortunately for me though, I ran into a catastrophic accident in my installation of the soft top on this car. As you've noticed in my videos, I always use tape and blankets and padded mats to help protect the paintwork of whatever I'm working on, and this is true for this Jag. Unfortunately, when I was pre-drilling the small screw holes around the rear cockpit, my drill snapped and the broken end of the bit gouged right through the tape and caused a deep scratch in the beautiful fresh paintwork on this $500,000 Jaguar. What I have learned and proven time and again is that when accidents happen, it's best to immediately take responsibility, own the mistake, and take the necessary steps to get it properly addressed and fixed professionally. It may hurt the bank accounts temporarily or cause a shift in your insurance policy, but in the end, your integrity, reputation, and especially your mental health will be stronger for owning it. With this incident, I immediately contacted Richard, the car's restorer, as well as my insurance company. Richard contacted the owner, as well as Coachworks, who'd handled the metal and paint. Coachworks professionally repaired and resprayed the rear half of the car new again. Of course, the top was temporarily removed for this process, and I reinstalled it again afterwards. Now, in addition to the tape and blankets, I also use a piece of plastic card as a hard mask whenever I'm using drills or tools close to the paintwork. Lesson well learned. That looks great. Um, so we're going to call that a day. Uh, we've finished all everything else and um yeah it's looking really good i'm just going to install the boot cover now and of course the front top seal i've still got to put that in okay and some final shots here as you can see i got in the uh that grab handle there windshield posts are in now and that about finishes it you've i've installed the boot cover which nothing to it there it was it came ready to install with those hooks already in the back of it and these guys here and they just tuck in and you've got these uh, 10x here that just snap onto this uh, chrome finisher panel and then there's little straps under here that go and uh, connect to those uh, lift the dot snaps that i showed you earlier that uh, are in the rear bulkhead so that finishes everything off that looks really nice very happy about it and uh yeah that's another one for the road so until next time, I am Jeff Chrysler, a detail enthusiast. This is a 69 E-Type Jaguar Series 2 complete interior installation. So I hope you've enjoyed it. We'll see you again.